I think I've taken for granted just how comforting it is to be alone in the kitchen at night and turn on the dishwasher. It's like being in a stateroom on a ship. There's the low rumble of the engine below you, a few gentle splashes from waves outside your window. Living with my family these past few months, I've realized just how deep my associations go when I hear the dishwasher. It takes me back to every time I've come back from college, coming home to the same old familiar kitchen. I'd be tired from the long bus ride, but I was still always the last one up at night, and I'd dig out the latest New York Times magazine, a luxury I didn't get at school, and read my favorite ethicist column. Usually I'd bust out the fancy olives or the chocolate or the wavy potato chips or the artisan nut thins and eat till my stomach felt heavy. And when I looked up, there'd be that same old familiar clock. I've made videos before about how certain songs transport me back to the exact first times I got into them. Like a hundred thousand fireflies reminding me of the summer I lived with my grandparents when we got to know each other more deeply and I did some of my first radio work. But I haven't thought as much about how a simple mechanical noise can transport me to all the dozens or hundreds or thousands of times I've heard it all at once. Take this funny little bathroom. It's got a slanted ceiling because it's under the back staircase. It just got renovated. It used to be blue, believe it or not. And up until a few months ago, it had these two long, skinny, fluorescent lights on either side of the mirror. When you flip the light switch, the first light would go on, blink, and then a few seconds later, the second light would turn on, blink. That exact pattern, that half step, blink, blink, was the same sound I heard as an eight-year-old making my last bathroom stop before an early morning car trip to Michigan. Was the same sound I heard as a sixth grader puzzling my way through my first big research project I was doing on Leonard Bernstein. Was the same sound I heard as a junior in high school after I'd crammed in a late night practice session to get the Kabalevsky Violin Concerto ready for the Ohio Music Educators Solo Competition. Was the same sound I heard every trip home from college every family Thanksgiving and Christmas until earlier this year. It's amazing how big a part in your life a sound can have until it's gone. I told my mom to take a video of those lights before they got replaced, and thank goodness she knew I was serious. Of course, there are two characters in this story I need to talk more about. My parents. They're the ones who bought this house when I was one and a half years old, who paid the bills, kept things clean and in working order, and most importantly, gave me comforting associations with all the whirrings and clickings and creakings our house makes, rather than painful ones. They've built a home here, but living here as an adult, there's a sense of not quite fitting in. Living here is an escape, sure, but is it my home anymore? I don't quite feel that way. In the coming months and years, I'm going to have to create a home for myself. And with all the uncertainty, the disconnectedness, the powerlessness I'm feeling, that seems daunting right now. 